we hurtle headlong into the digital age, pause to ponder just how far we've come. The 80s generation had no dot com, no digital. The future they imagined has been transformed by a technology revolution. My, how we've changed. Welcome to a short history of the modern world, charting the good and bad of a quarter century of innovation. This is Stop Rewind. Right now, it's replay on all things aquatic. We've been mucking about in boats ever since our Darwinian ancestors crawled out of the primordial swamp. Since time immemorial, those who know boating have been obsessed with two things. The first, speed. Giving you power over the elements, proclaiming your command of the winds and waves, and, of course, getting from point A to point B as fast as possible. But with speed came another, more understandable obsession. And that would be safety. So let's begin with safety. In 1985, this was the cutting edge of technological triumph. The Tinker Tramp lifeboat. Lightweight and buoyant. But if you're in 40-foot seas in the North Atlantic, you probably want something a scratch more sturdy. Because lightweight and buoyant has a tendency to be, well, lightweight. So that downwash from the helicopter may dampen your hopes of a smooth rescue. Enter the Harding boat. Part lifeboat, part roller coaster ride. At the first sound of abandoned ship, the hapless crew would pile in and drop 50 feet for the ride of their lives. People pay money for this at a theme park ride, but sailors get it for free. These boats are still being used today when you absolutely positively have to get the hell off a sinking ship. Still, that little voice in the back of your head is going, what if I don't make it to the boat? Well, pray that back in 1986, you were fashionably dressed in this. The Marine Abandonment Protection Suit. Catchy name, it glows, it floats, and it keeps you warm in freezing waters that can kill in minutes. It made use of the latest materials the 80s could offer, keeping sailors far safer than the old raincoat and woolly jumper. For the warmer climates down under, they took a massive conceptual leap and sewed a life jacket to some coveralls, creating survivoralls. Better name, no abandonment issues here, and they kept you floating the right way up until your local helicopter service arrived. So enough of safety. Let's get back to speed. The Hong Kong police took a dislike to local drug lords outrunning their junks on the South China Sea. So, they enlisted British-made typhoon boats to catch the bad guys. Designed to turn tightly in the crowded waters of Hong Kong Harbour, they were powerful and manoeuvrable. At 80 kilometres an hour, it was game over for any drug smuggler who wanted to play Miami Vice. But defending truth, justice and the right to go really fast isn't always the safest of jobs. Which brings us neatly back to safety again. Something submariners must ponder a lot when they're contemplating Davy Jones's locker. When things go wrong down below, you can't just stroll out on the fire stairs. So, back in 1989, this is how they trained for submarine emergencies in Australia. Swim like a man or woman possessed up seven stories of water-filled claustrophobic madness. Not forgetting in your panic that you have to breathe out the whole way because the compressed air in your lungs will rapidly decompress as you near the surface. And that's got to hurt, making this one hell of a lung-busting day at the office. Oh, 
from the depths of Down Under to the English countryside, the need for speed took on a, well, let's say more eccentric demeanour. This classic English estate was home to Fiona, the Countess of Arran. In 1990, our Countess held the world record for the fastest electric boat. Now, let me show you where our mighty atoms are. They're very, very small, but full of power. They're no bigger, really, than a large soufflet. This was a bit of eco-friendly engineering almost 20 years ahead of its time. Those mighty atoms charge Lady Aaron to a top speed of 82 kilometres an hour. And the record stood for five years. Jolly good, old girl. But as the 90s set sail, there were wind-powered watercraft going flat out at 70 kilometres an hour. With LA-designed fluoro sails, these yachts looked like a floating Venice beach. Known as the Trifoiler, these stripped-down nautical hot rods took existing sailboat design and ripped out anything it didn't need to go flat out fast. They took full advantage of the computer design technology the 80s had ushered in. Composite materials allowed for stronger and lighter boats. These were fashion and function. In fact, they were so efficient, you sailed faster than the wind. Back in 1990, if you wanted to be the baddest man on the planet with his hand on the tiller, you'd better cross the Atlantic and start singing La Marseillaise because this was speed personified. French yacht Objective Song was a stripped down speed machine that used a solid carbon fibre sail to maximise efficient use of the wind. It set the trend for the super fast outrigger style yachts of today that hit over 90 kilometres an hour. Provided the sailing is smooth, and yes, we're going back to safety, being lost overboard is every sailor's nightmare. It doesn't take a genius to work out the ocean is mighty big and has little regard for the follies of men in boats. One lone head bobbing about is mighty small. If you're going to end up in the briny, you need to be seen. You can use a flare, but they only last a few minutes. So, this invention, the C-Mark, helps you be seen more clearly using a fluorescent dye that hangs in the water around you. And it stays there for up to one and a half hours. I wonder if sharks are attracted to the colour green. Eh, no matter. Help is just an invention away. In 1990, Boffins came up with this, the Pac-Man of the Ocean. This is the Cobra SRC, designed in England, and it'll scoop a survivor straight out of the sea. Now, you've already seen the suit you want to be wearing if you had to wait for the Pac-Man rescue in the open ocean. 80s technology was making even the most uncomfortable places survivable. There was even a clever invention for those unfortunates who found themselves ditching at sea in an aircraft. This English survival suit, or integrated survival system, had an inbuilt rebreather that gave you enough oxygen to escape a ditched plane or helicopter without having to carry an oxygen tank. Get scared off by all this safety talk though. The ocean is a marvellous place where creatures can be free to swim, dance and frolic. So why not join them by getting up close and personal with Mother Nature inside your very own bionic dolphin? This was an American invention known as the VASH, standing for Variable Altitude Submersible Hydrofoil. Where do they get these names? It's still waiting its turn to become the next big thing. But a 
speed machine that did take off in the early 90s was this, the Wild Thing. A simple inflatable with a clear plastic hull that was cheap to make and fast as hell. The perfect weekend ride for your local neighbourhood aquatic gearhead. The Wild Thing boasts some clever engineering. The floats on either side helped it stay up. However, if you happen to be boating with Jack the Ripper, then you could still make it home. Dry and alive. Safety and speed. Two reasons why these wild things are still being used today. Now, let's just say you're a total speed freak. You want noise, horsepower, pollution, engine problems. In 1992, you would have been the first in line to race these. They're called hydroplanes, and these guys will smash on through to 260 kilometers an hour. In the early 90s, improved computers were putting some serious science into boat building. Most of it in aerodynamics, trying to get them going fast, but not doing this. To prevent the flip, designers smoothed out all the sharp edges on the boat. Smooth edges means less turbulence. Less turbulence means your boat stays on the water, reducing the risk of the dreaded and deadly blowover. During the 90s, all this science created an aquadynamic revenge of the nerds. If you didn't have the snarts, you weren't going fast or safe. More proof was this. Volvo entered the speed on water stakes with the bat boat. Designed by an overprotective father for his boy racer son, the bat boat took its name from the winged hull design. For the pedants, its real name is the Volvo Penta B28. But whatever you call it, a top speed of 130 kilometers an hour was an adrenaline rush any speed freak desired. The high tech secret? The bat-winged bottom with two side rails that kind of worked like training wheels on a kiddie bike to help stabilise the boat, which means heaps more of this. But this over-testosteroned Volvo was definitely not the last word in speed. Down under, a couple of water warriors were using the Batwing idea to create a super stable speedboat. This pond skimming rocket could do zero to 100 in six seconds. And could even go faster than the Volvo. A soccer mum frightening speed of 140 kilometers an hour. Welcome the Concept 180 speedboat. This boat took its power to weight ratio seriously. Minnow sized, big performance. Put it this way, if it was a car, it would be a Volkswagen Beetle with a V8 duct taped to the back. Remember, that boat is going 140 kilometers an hour. It was designed to tow skiers, so at 140 k's, all you can say is this guy has some major guts, or just some really awesome health insurance. 
So, what happens when you take all that guardrail technology and upsize? The VSV-50. VSV stands for Very Slender Vessel, and 50 stands for its length. In this case, 50 feet. It's the catwalk model of sexy, ocean-going speedboats. But it isn't all good looks. It'll crack 100 kilometers an hour, and while it might get wet in the process, it won't break a sweat doing it. Designed in the USA, this boat was really cutting edge, and I don't mean that as a cliche. That sharp nose cut through the waves, though its official term was wave piercing. So, it could go faster than the boats that had to bounce around on top of waves. Wanna go even faster? Calm down, we're getting to that. Here's a sneak peek. In the 90s, the cotton wool kids of Generation Y were kept safe from harm by life-saving gadgets like this. A tube called the Flube. This practical, life-saving device was designed back in 1996 and is still being sold today. You just roll it up and attach a small gas cylinder to use it again. The theory was these flube tubes would become a standard part of every seaside journey's picnic basket. That's a seriously good idea in anyone's book. But if you're at sea, you might need something else to help the rescue guys reach you. We saw the Seamark floating die from 1990. It hung around in the water for one and a half hours once it was deployed. But what happens after that? Well, that's when you use the sea rescue. Get it? Sea and rescue? This simple rollout device has small flotation props along the length of it that improve your chances of being seen, hence sea rescue. Okay, being rescued is no joke. That's why so much time, effort and money has gone into rescue devices over the years. The sea rescue wasn't the only big improvement in ocean safety during the 90s. We've already showed you this. A submarine escape training system. But you've still got to be one hell of a swimmer. Fast forward 10 years and ask the big what if questions. Like what if the sub gets stranded too deep to swim to the surface? That's when you pray that somebody on the surface has this bit of technology coming to your aid. This is the Remora Rescue Sub, a remotely operated submarine, and it'll reach sailors from a stricken sub up to 500 meters below the surface. It simply locks onto the stranded sub, creates an airlock, and then is able to carry six people at a time to the surface. Topside and technology was going ahead in leaps and bounds. If you go back to the mid 80s, small life rafts were a pretty flimsy bet, easily flipped over in big seas. So in 1997, this was developed, the unflappable rolling raft. Well, that's not too bad getting in. It rolled with the waves. Sure, it looked like the equivalent of being tossed into a washing machine, but if it saved your life, well then, who cares? Survival is important, but for every engineer out there trying to make the ocean a safer place to visit, there have been boat builders willing to put their bank account on the line and build the biggest, fastest behemoths technology will allow. OK, time to get back to speed. Meet Ohio Steel. In the mid-90s, this 1,000 horsepower speed machine was the world's fastest V-bottom boat at 210 kilometers an hour. That's the kind of speed that would evaporate your license if you tried it on the freeway. 
However, if you don't want to risk your butt in an oversized tin can, We have a sub on the course, alert, we have a sub on the course. Well, this is the sport for you. Human-powered underwater submarine racing. Yes, in the late 90s, this was a serious sport. Extreme? Eh, kind of. You decide. Elsewhere, engineers were taking nautical design a little more seriously. This is speed and safety, 21st century style, as long as you're not on the receiving end. It's the French naval frigate Secouf, and it had some smooth lines. No, I'm not talking about smooth lines used by sailors on shore leave. I'm talking smooth lines that made it stealthy and nearly invisible to radar. It could hide away from the enemy and conduct surprise attacks or just keep away from prying missiles. In fact, just to prove how good it was, here's a token shot of an Exocet missile hitting a less stealthy ship. Which one would you rather be on? But if all you wanted was a classy way of going really fast, then it was time again to get behind the wheel of a Volvo. Not the Swedish suburban kind, but the grip it and rip it nautical variety. Traditional boats use an inboard propeller like this, which pushes the boat forward. But being behind all these struts and mounts means they operate in some pretty turbulent water, and that's inefficient. So these shiny props on the Volvo Cruiser pull the boat through non-turbulent water as their mountings are behind them. That makes this machine 20% faster than a comparable boat. The Volvo's propellers also act as rudders, giving this boat the turning circle of an over-caffeinated dolphin. On the topic of all things dolphin-like and eco-friendly, this boat minimizes air pollution by using an exhaust system that operates below the water. Turns out, just about every boat designer owes a thing or two to the generations of designers that came before them. Take the Australian solar sailor, Marjorie Kay. It combined the solid sail of the French yacht Objective Somme. Added in electric powered engines like the world record beating Lady Aaron, and put it on top of some slimline hulls, just like the trifoiler. This machine was first over the line in the second international solar and advanced boat race. With ultra-efficient sails and a small engine powered by solar panels, the Marjorie K had speed and safety. OK, it lacks the stealth of the French frigate, but you can't have everything. That was a quick rewind through a quarter century of boating technology. If recent history is anything to go by, it's only going to get faster. But you'll be safe and sound as long as you wear some manner of loose-fitting orange clothing. Bon voyage! <laughs>